Okay, thank you, operator. And from there, we're going to take a question here in the room first, and we're going to bounce back and forth according to who has questions where. Sir, why don't you stand up, and uh, there's a microphone coming here to you, and we'll take your question. And again, ladies and gentlemen, I ask that you keep your questions and comments contained to uh, the subject at hand, this draft license amendment request. My name is S. David Freeman. I was the CEO of several nuclear utilities, including the Tennessee Valley Authority, the New York Power Authority, uh, and Sacramento Municipal Utility District. I have had probably more experience uh, with nuclear power uh, as a responsible CEO than anyone in the room. And I must say to you that I find this meeting shocking. Uh, it's shocking because it's portrayed as a public meeting, and yet I feel like I am looking through a peephole behind the nuclear curtain at discussions that are going on uh, that the public is not participating in. And this is simply a, a chance for us to see one discussion, but I know these discussions will continue. And the idea that the utility has the right to ask the judges to tell them what they need to supply in order to get approval uh, just uh, strikes me as unreal. Uh, we're talking about a nuclear reactor with steam generators that are so damaged that no utility, if it were initially trying to get a license, would come before the Nuclear Regulatory Commission with equipment of that kind and ask for a license. I, I, I'm sure that no one in the room would disagree with me. All right. And my question is, this, this is all about paperwork, but frankly, with the chairperson of your commission and others talking about transparency in public hearings. Uh, the public is not being heard here today, and there is no public hearing. And we're talking about restarting a reactor that has not been fixed, which the utility admits is broken. And we're talking about footnotes and paperwork instead of, of safety. And then you have three judges that are also sitting there trying to decide whether your Cal process is a de facto licensing process. And so here, going behind everybody else is an attempt to grant people a license without changing anything and without the public having a voice in it. And frankly, I think, uh, I know everyone here is very sincere in what you're doing. Don't get me wrong. I've been a staff person myself, and I've worked in agencies, and I've worked in utilities. Uh, people believe they're doing the right thing, but you folks need a mirror. This is, th oh. this is, this is the opposite of a public hearing. Okay. And Mr. the idea of, of restarting this reactor without having a public hearing is an insult to the six, seven million people in Southern California that are scared to death of what's going on. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Freeman, for your comments and your question. Uh, why don't, you, why don't you folks go ahead and address? Yeah, I'll, I'll just start by thanking you for, for your comment. And the intent here is not a hearing. Uh, as we indicated in the beginning, this is a pre-submittal meeting between Southern California Edison and the NRC to do exactly what we did was to allow them to ask, you know, present their um, draft license amendment request and, and have a dialogue with us about um, the content of it and ask any questions that they may have. Um, part of our, you know, as we move forward, the, the goal here was to have an understanding and maybe share some information to enable us to, if they do submit it, to be able to go through a review process in a timely manner. Um, that's the purpose of this type of meeting. Um, anyone want to yeah. add anything? From, from the perspective of the, the, the second half of what you were you were addressing, which is, you know, a, um, a public participation in the process, um, that begins, you know, after a, something is actually submitted to us. Uh, so once a LAR, a license amendment request is submitted to us, we'll go through our. We'll, we'll go through the process, you know, the, our, our our defined process, which is to to do the. 
guarantee that that, that real hearing will occur before you give them a license? A, a request, a hearing request, uh, an opportunity for a hearing request will be um, part of the the notice uh, um, of, of the receipt of the application. So there will be an opportunity for to, to request a, a hearing. Uh, w once we get that um, the request and and when we issue that, uh, one of our requirements is that we're, that there's we, we can't take action until that comment period, which is typically a 30-day comment period, um, is, it ends. So we we won't take action until that occurs. We, that we will actually have a public hearing in which our experts can testify before you make a decision. I cannot guarantee that anyone would ever have 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 a hearing because that that is not a decision that we make. It is a decision that the ASLB makes. The ASLB, though, the ones who hear the request for the hearing, they hear the the the, the, the whether they're. We're going to follow our process, which um, it depends upon. It depends upon the the outcome of our review, and, and specifically with the no significant hazards consideration determination. If 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 that is determined that they that the amendment request meets the criteria for that, um, there we are. The the regulation specifies that we we would proceed without um, even even if we have a. Uh, or the, the, the amendment request could be issued even if we have a hearing request. And this is a known process. It's outlined uh, in NRC regulations. It's on the website. Well known. That's my problem. Pardon me? The process is quite well known. That's my problem. Okay. Well, I want to know whether, the, whether this NRC is actually going to practice what they're preaching now, oh. which is to give the public a right to present testimony and witnesses in contradictory. People, I believe that these folks believe that reactor's safe. Oh, okay. Sir, I, I think he answered the question regarding the ASLB. Uh, and there is a process, there's an existing process, and uh, Mr. Broadus has addressed your question. Uh, if we want to discuss it in greater detail, he'll be happy to take it up with you after the meeting. Okay? We and, both agree this is not a public hearing. That is correct. That is correct. Nor was it. Uh, we're going to take a question from Kendra Ulrich here from Friends of the Earth in the room, and then we're going to go back to the phone. Go ahead, Kendra. Hi. Uh, my name is Kendra Ulrich. I'm with Friends of the Earth. Um, first, I just want to say that I uh, find the fact that uh, Edison is literally making safety a footnote at the bottom of the page is absolutely appalling. That this does not address all of the safety concerns that are raised uh, in the uh, restart proposal for this incredibly damaged reactor. But specifically, I have two questions. One, uh, related to something that Mr. Nazareth said uh, regarding the analysis that you had done. Um, you had said that you had done an analysis of all reactor systems that are impacted by operation at reduced power levels for extended periods of time. Uh, I would like to know when that analysis is going to be made public. Is it available on your website? Yeah, I mean, I, if, if what you're talking about is what they've submitted to us, I believe the responses, um, any, they're, they're either, unless they're proprietary, all the responses are available in, in Adams or on our public website. I haven't seen it. My question is when. Is that, do you know that one is proprietary? Are you talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, would that be included in RAI 11 responses then? Yeah, RAI 11 has already been out, right? right. The original, and we just, we just revised RAI 11. Yeah, yeah that's so right. I, the, the initial RAI 11 response, I understand, is out. So. Right. Do you yeah. recall if that, that contained proprietary information off the top of your head? I don't that remember. RAI, the initial one did not. Mm -hmm. Okay, the new one does, and very selected sections. Okay, the revision does in selected sections. Most of it is still not proprietary. Right, so the, the prior response to RAI 11 is publicly available. The most recent one we understand was dated on Monday and that has not been processed yet, but the portion of that response that's publicly available will be um, made public in Adams shortly. Okay. 
Well, we'll be looking for that. Um, I look forward to seeing your analysis of all the various reactor systems that are impacted by uh, this proposal. So what's your second question? My then? second question, well, specifically relates to the fact that, you know, Edison has asserted here over and over again that they have some degree of certainty about the safety of this proposal of operation at 70 percent, when in fact Westinghouse and Areva, their own experts, disagree as to the cause of the tube wear. Westinghouse says that it's two pitch and turbulence. Areva says that it is fluid elastic instability. Intertech and Areva disagree as time to, uh, on the time to tube burst. So there's no agreement between the experts that Edison has submitted to you for uh, their justification for restarting and restarting for five months. Um, I, Mr. Brodus had made a comment that, you know, the Cal could be, you know, completed afterwards. I would assume that having a technical basis for approving a license amendment of this type would be a requirement. Mm -hmm. So that, therefore, that would have to be completed before you could issue any license amendment, or at least the technical evaluation report would have to be completed. As such, the... Why don't let Martha answer that first, Kendra? Okay. Go ahead. Ken? The, the licensee's uh, proposed license amendment request is, is basically changing the acceptance criteria for the steam generator tubes. It's redefining the power level at which they have to determine what the acceptance limits are. That review can be handled independently of the Cal response, which is how are they demonstrating that they are actually meeting that. The steam generator technical specifications are performance-based. We specify the acceptance criteria. Licensees are responsible for uh, ensuring that they meet those acceptance criteria, and those analysis that they perform to do that are subject to the inspection and oversight process. And in this particular case, it's being covered as a as a, one of the cow items. Right. So their their justification for why they can demonstrate tube integrity at seventy percent is based upon operational assessments. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. Okay. But that's and but and, the and their operational assessments that they've submitted to you only show that they can demonstrate that. Again, disagreement about amongst the expert that they've submitted to you, but they've only submitted anything for five months. They are asking for approval for two years. So essentially, Edison is coming to the NRC and asking you to approve something with no technical basis to actually be able to fall back on. So if there is an accident, you are liable as the regulators, and quite frankly, any regulator that's worth their name would turn this down on its face or my second question was, are you going to be requiring them to submit an operational assessment that actually gives you a technical basis for approving a license amendment for two years? The, the, the proposal is to change the acceptance criteria that the steam generator tubes have to meet. Every, the licensee is required to and follow it's those... two years, right? It, yes, their current proposal is for cycle 17 operations, so it's one cycle... Which is what he just said, is two years, right? Right. But the licensee is required to meet those acceptance criteria. They have to determine how long they can operate, uh, whether it's five months, four months, six months. They have to de make that determination, and that's consistent with how every licensee in the country does it for their steam generators. They have to make the determination of how long they can run while still meeting those requirements. Those analysis are subject to the inspection and oversight process. And in this particular case, we're reviewing those as part of the Cal response. Except that their technical experts that they've submitted to you also disagree with one another. So they are asking you to accept something for two years with no technical basis and no agreement amongst their experts. The, the return to power report that's being reviewed under a separate process, our review is still ongoing and we'll make a determination. And, and that's in their current that proposal. Their that will be completed prior to a license amendment being issued. I, those are two independent processes. So, they, they so your, your technical evaluation for justifying restart, for allowing them to restart these reactors, the basis for 70% uh, integrity, tube integrity, is separate from approving a license amendment to make a footnote at the bottom of the tube integrity technical specification? Yes, because their, their current proposal is just to change the acceptance criteria which the tubes are required to meet. That is a separate review from how do they go about meeting them. 
So it's, it's there's separate reviews. And so, so you're, you're, you're and, literally and, taking safety out of, the, out of the question. And no, let them answer fully. Hang on. The safety is being addressed as a result of our review of the return to power report in, in response to the uh, to the confirmatory action letter. So the, an the answer is no. We, we still we are focused on safety, but they're two separate processes. The acceptance criteria for the tubes is in the license amendment request, and the safe, how you go about reading that acceptance criteria is part of the Cal response. Michelle? Yeah, to clarify, this license amendment doesn't give them, this is not the only thing they need to restart the unit. So we, the license amendment, you know, ideally, if, if things lined up right, you'd have a license amendment, we would get through and finish our review of the um, confirmatory action letter submittal for restart, which only it, the proposal is to run for five months. At the end, there's an inspection report that still has to be, um, uh, we, have, we still need an exit meeting and a report for the closeout inspections that have been going on for the past six months or so. Okay, those things all need to come together, at which point if they do and they line up, we would authorize restart for five months, for that five-month cycle. Not two years. Not two years. Except they're asking you for no significant hazard consideration for restarting a reactor. Yeah. What, they're asking a no, what they're asking in no significant hazard, what they provided for their proposed no significant hazard consideration determination is on the change to the tech spec. In, well, on in tube the, integrity, right? On the performance criteria sure. for the tube integrity. Yeah. So, I, I understand yeah. that fully, and Michelle, I just want to make clear, I understood that as well, that approving the license amendment isn't approving restart. Um, it's removing a critical licensing question from this process. Um, and approving a no significant hazard consideration with so much uncertainty, I can't imagine that any engineer also worth their name and their professional reputation would approve such a thing. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Kendra. Operator, we'll take the next caller, please. Thank you. Dan Hirsch, you may ask your question. Hi, Dan. How are you doing? Miserably, how are you? Uh, better, better than you, struck. better than you. Go ahead, what's your question or comment? I'm quite struck by the lack of candor in response to Secretary Adams' question as to whether the process that you are contemplating will permit all of the necessary safety information to be available and be reviewed prior to making the decision. Well, let's take another... Uh, what, excuse me. Go ahead. I'll try to finish. Um, what has not been said here clearly is that what is being proposed by Edison, and apparently with some kind of um, uh, uh, indication of prior agreement by NRC staff, is to get this license amendment, which is essential for a restart of the crippled reactors, and do so with a safety hearing that would occur after the fact. The phrase that has been used over and over again is that they're requesting a no significant hazards consideration, but you really have not disclosed that what that means is as in the old West days where the judge says, we'll hang them now, but we will give them a fair trial later. What you are proposing to this entire session and have not been candid about is to permit a hearing, but only after it is too late, to give them the approval and allow a hearing to occur long after the fact. And this occurs after Edison had screwed up initially on the steam generators by insisting that they be able to be put in without a hearing, a hearing which could have disclosed the fundamental design problems. And NRC staff having screwed up in allowing that to occur. So what is going on right now, I think we just have to be really clear about about 10 days ago, there was a oral argument before the Atomic Safety and Licensing Board about whether or not what the two of you are doing violates the law and is, in fact, a de facto license amendment process and that a hearing would be required. And what NRC staff and Edison are doing after being given a very rough time by the licensing board, which was very skeptical of what you are doing, 
if you're trying to pull the rug out from under three administrative law judges of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission carrying out a mandate given to them by the commission to determine whether what you're doing really does require a hearing. And the idea that you could try to get this thing turned on in um, less than two months from now and hold the hearing long afterwards, I think is simply scandalous. Um, and at least you should be candid about it. You should say, yeah, Edison wants us to um, give them this approval, but make sure that none of the safety concerns that the experts who are not at Edison and not at NRC staff wish to raise before a licensing board could be heard before they get the approval. I mean, we really do not have a system of justice in this country that is supposed to get, hang you first and give you your trial later. But that is what you two entities are doing right now. I don't think you'll succeed. I think you're doing something in the face of that licensing board that will anger them greatly. I think it will create a furor on the Hill because the Commission has promised the Congress that there would be complete review and that review completed before any decision to start up. But at least you should today have been clear that what you're proposing is to have the review after the approval. The hearing would be permitted but long after it can make any difference. And I just think that you're undercutting any chance of credibility uh, for Edison to be believed that it can run a facility safely or for the NRC staff to be viewed as an entity that can determine whether or not it is safe. Um, so I just want to say it's exceedingly troubling, and if you're going to do it, at least you should be candid about it. Uh, to have gone through this whole meeting and not really made clear to people that you're proposing that any safety hearing occur after the fact, um, it really shows how embarrassed you are about what you're really doing. All right. All right. Thank you, Dan. I'm, I'm not sure well, if there are specific questions within there, but what I'll try to do is respond to um, some of the statements that were made in that, um, first of all, you, you, as we've stated in, in numerous instances previously, and I'll, and I'll restate again today, that, that it is, you know, we will not allow a restart um, until we're, we're, we're confident that they're, that they're the, the unit can be operated safely, um, and that's independent of if any license amendment requests um, or, or even the ASLB activities. Um, you know, we're, we're, we would not allow them to operate if we, if we did not believe that they were safe to operate, and we will not allow that to occur. Um, and, and we will take whatever time necessary in order to make that determination. Um, the, from the standpoint of, of the license amendment request and any hearing process, um, we're going to follow the, 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 the process that's required of us, and we, and, and we are going to do that. We are gonna, we're going to be in full compliance with that. Um, we're going to follow the normal process. It's our normal process. We are going to do that. Um, the licensee, you know, SEA has not asked for uh, an exigent or an emergency amendment request, so you know there is no... Uh, um, Cutting short any time frames by which people can make, you know, to, can, can request a hearing or, um, or, or cutting short the opportunity for public participation because of a, a emergency or exigent uh, situations, you know, that apply. Um, so we are going to follow that process, uh, the normal process. Um, so that's, I mean, I hope that that responds to the. Not at all. You just weren't candid. Is it not true that what you and Edison are proposing is to hold the hearing as to whether this is safe after the fact? Is that not what you're proposing? I'm, I'm, I'm indicating that we're going to follow our process. Um, the, but the, the, process the regulation is to hold the hearing after the decision to approve the license amendment. Okay. All right. The regulation. The trial after the hanging. All right. Hang on a second, Dan. <laughs> He's trying to respond to you. Doug. The, right, the regulation that dictates um, our review of the no significant hazards consideration specifies that um, 
if, if, if we, the staff, are able to make a no significant hazards um, consideration determination, that we are able to proceed with that regardless of whether there is a um, uh, any, any request or pen, uh, for a hearing or other pending um, uh, action within the ASLB, uh, or you know, whether it's either before before the ASLB. Um, we do plan to make the notification um, uh, notifications that, that are specified in that regulation as well. Um, if there is a hearing request or if the ASLB, you know, the action proceeding is still ongoing, we will make a notification. We, our plan is to make a notification prior to that action being completed. Any action being completed, whether it's the re a restart decision under the CAL or in a decision um, under the li under a license amendment. Um, that my understanding of this, and I'm getting outside of my range of a, a full understanding here, but my understanding is that is so that, that there's an opportunity for uh, parties, you know, parties of the of the of those actions to to be able to to, to make to take action uh, as a result of that uh, that 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 possible action that could be uh, be occurring. So that's you know we, we want to make that notification prior to the, to either of those two uh, decisions being made. All right. All right. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for your comments and your opinions. We appreciate them. I'm going to take a question from Mr. Freeman here in the audience. Mr. Freeman? I just wonder if the panel is aware of the fact that the ISO has said publicly that they are not planning on Santa Nofri running this summer at all. Their plans for the summer, which are quite well publicized and well known to everyone, assume that that San Onofre will provide zero power. Uh, I am the founding trustee of the ISO. I ran two utilities in California as a CEO, you know, and I was Gray Davis' senior advisor during the energy crisis. There's nobody more concerned about reliability than I am, but the state of California is not one power plant away from a blackout anymore. That was 10 years ago. The ISO has worked diligently uh, last year and this year to make sure that there's adequate power supply and that reliability is the responsibility of the state of California not the responsibility of the NRC and you all know it and that issue sh should have no bearing on your decision and I'm sure it, it doesn't and it should not have any bearing on the Edison Company's uh, decision making uh, either. We have a serious safety problem that has not been fixed at this power plant and all this paperwork is not assuring anybody that a restart is in the public interest. And, uh, and all this hyped up concern by the Edison Company's the PR department uh, really should be ignored by you today because it is irrelevant to your decision. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Freeman. Any comments? Oh, no, I would just thank you for, for that information. As Doug had indicated, our focus is on safety and the safe operation of the unit. Um, we won't authorize restart until we believe it is safe to do so. Um, uh, with regard to California's power situation, that's, that is not our concern. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, operator, we'll take the next question. Do we need to? Next question is from Ace Hoffman. Uh, operator, um, yeah, thank you for could you just call. tell us, do you have any clue as to how many callers are left on the line? Yes, sir, we have about six questions remaining. Okay. We're likely only going to take six more questions. Go ahead, Ace. Okay, thank you for taking and we're, my and we're call. Running, we're running over, but go ahead. Okay, we, some of us have been studying San Onofre very, very carefully for many years, and we are not hearing a lot of answers to questions that we have right now. For example, we didn't hear anything about a multi-tube break in the case of a main steam line break because there are thousands of damaged tubes. We don't know if those tubes are damaged by uh, fluid elastic instability, probably not in Unit 2, but flow-induced vibration certainly. And what about fatigue? That hasn't been mentioned at all. These are technical issues that the public would like to see the answers to. We don't want them to be redacted or ignored. Yes, sir. Is there any chance that we will be getting a, a full technical uh, description of why San Onofre thinks that they can restart the reactor? And I also want to make a comment about some of their early uh, comments at the beginning where they said that San Onofre is needed 
that was their word needed for uh, voltage support and uh, to supply power to Southern California Edison, to uh, Southern California. But the ISO has made it clear that we have an excess of power without San Onofre even having tried to install thousands of rooftops, uh, solar, uh, demand response, wind generation, all these things have been, have been ignored for nearly two years now. So it's time to move on, and perhaps the NRC should stand up, get a spine, and tell San Onofre that they're nowhere near close to restarting. You can't start a broken reactor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ace. Okay. Yeah, I just... Um, just briefly, you know, we, um, you know, that, that the, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, the Cal actions, the, the, the review of the, of the restart plan is a separate activity, and that's really not, not the intent of the, the meeting today. Um, but, but I wanted to just uh, reinforce the, that, you know, we are planning to have an, another public meeting in California in, in, you know, probably the, the May time frame is what we're, we're looking at at this point, where we would be able to discuss the, the issues, you know, that, that we have uh, reviewed as part of this, the, the, the return to service plan and, and our Cal actions, as well as the inspection activities. Um, Ken can kind of give you some some background on the, those those you know the, the specific technical questions that you you, you asked about um, and how those you know would be considered. Yeah, I guess in terms of uh, you brought up uh, the multiple tube break uh, during a steam line break, uh, the technical specification requirements for San Onofre and for other units uh, are intended to prevent that from occurring. They're supposed to have margins of safety against uh, breakage during a steam line break accident of. Uh, approximately 1.4 so the technical specification requirements are intended to prevent that that is the fo one of the focuses of our review of the return to power report is to ensure that tube integrity would be maintained consistent with those factors of safety and the technical specifications all right thank, thank you gentlemen operator we'll take the next call up please John Giesman this is John Giesman. I was a uh, member of the California Energy Commission during the Davis and Schwarzenegger administrations. I'm a former board member of the ISO. I have a question for both the NRC and for Edison. Based on information Edison has turned over for the investigation being conducted by the California Public Utilities Commission, even if both Units 2 and Unit 3 were working perfectly, there were only 96 hours in 2012 when they would have been competitive with the market price for power in Southern California. That's a little more than 1% of the time. Why are we putting ourselves through so much regulatory pain and suffering for a plant that is not cost effective 99% of the time? Um, well, thank you for your uh, comments, John. Uh, however, as we indicated earlier, our, uh, for the agency, our focus here is on the safety of the units and, um, you know, making a decision as to whether they're able to be operated safely. Uh, with regard to your other comments and uh, reliability and, and those issues, that's not in the um, jurisdiction of the NRC. What's Edison's explanation? You know, we're uh, not prepared today to be talking to that. We came here with a, a group of technical folks, not financial folks. So, no comment. All right. Thank you, John. Operator, we'll take the next call, please. Thank you, Ray Lutz. Yes, hello. Um, this is Ray Lutz with Citizens Oversight. And uh, in talking about this, no... Um, no hazards uh, determination. Um, the, uh, there are some words that I didn't hear from the NRC when they, this is proposed. And the words are, you've got to be kidding. I mean, this is a, a plant that we know now, I mean, there, we should be giving an award to SCE for their ability to avoid public meetings and public scrutiny and a full technical technical review. The defective steam generator design occurred because they worked to avoid a license amendment process. And now we know that they actually didn't make changes to their steam generators after they already knew that they were going to be subject to excessive fluid elastic instability type of uh, 
of dangers. And they didn't do that because they didn't want to have a license amendment process happen. Now they're coming in with a request to avoid any kind of full technical review of a plant that is already known to be completely defective because of these steam generators. And they want to add a footnote and then say to you guys, now we can, uh, we're, we're going to be, a, this plant is just like it's brand new. It's, uh, there's nothing wrong with it and there's no hazard at all. I cannot believe that these words did not come out of your mouth. You've got to be kidding to make this request of the NRC and the, the public scrutiny, uh, review of this situation to come in there, Southern California Edison, and ask for no hazards determination when we know this plant is a suffering um, design mistake because of your fault, a $1 billion mistake that you guys are still sucking money out of the public to fund. Now, if this goes forward and the NRC says this is fine, uh, I mean, I've got to ask the NRC, doesn't this take your breath away for someone to come in and say there's no hazard at all? Because even though the thing was shut down, there's hundreds of tubes that are plugged. We put in stuff and we did analysis. We're talking about fluid elastic instability, even though a lot of it has to do with random turbulence. All right. Uh, it's got to take your breath away. I mean, I cannot believe that this, uh, you guys are sitting there talking about process and how you're following the procedure, but I don't even know why you're getting past square one. The answer should be no. We're not going to even look at this stupid thing. All right. Thank you, Ray. Michelle. Uh, thank you for your, um, your input. Um, uh, you know, the licensee is following the process and they are looking at a license amendment request. And I, I know you don't want to hear that, but that is the process and that's the one we're following. Um, along with that, uh, we are doing a thorough technical review of the technical issues associated with the steam generators. Um, that's uh, about all I can say. Yeah. The only other thing that I would add to that is, is that from the standpoint of the no significance hazards consideration, um, you know, there, there is specific criteria that are called out in the regulations that we have to um, review that against. Um, and actually, I'll, I'll go ahead and just read those so that everyone can understand what those are. Um, the, the, the determination, the, the consideration has to look at whether the, the, the requested change to the amendment, in the amendment, involves a significant increase in the probability of consequences of an accident previously evaluated. Number two, creates a possibility of a new or different kind of accident from an accident previously evaluated. And number three, involves a significant reduction in margin of safety. Um, those are the criteria that, that, that have to be evaluated, and they have to be evaluated based upon the, the requested change in the amendment. Um, those are, it, it is not, it's not something that goes beyond what, was, what is being requested in the amendment. Um, it, it is only what is requested in the amendment and does it meet that, does the change result in any of those occurring. That, and that's the criteria that we have to evaluate that against. Any other comments, Ray? All right, operator, we'll take the next caller, please. And the next question is from Gary Hedrick. Hi, Gary, go ahead. Hi, I'm Gary Hedrick, representing San Clemente Green, about 2,000 people living in harm's way here. Um, first off, I think it's important to look at the total picture when we're talking about the processes the NRC is considering. And it certainly must have been a humbling experience when you look back on Fukushima and realize how badly the seismologists and engineers missed the mark in predicting what might happen. And now um, you have an opportunity to follow the process, which I heard a lot about today. But another process the NRC has available is the adjudicated license amendment hearing. And the question to NRC is why not just go with the most safe bet, do a more thorough investigation, and use all the, all the great minds that are at your disposal to make this determination, especially in in the fact that we need to be absolutely certain that if you allow them to restart, that everyone's had a chance to weigh in on that very important process. So 
that's a question for NRC. Why not just jump right to the adjudicator license hearing? And uh, then I'd like to follow up with a question to Edison. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, again, uh, yeah, I think, you know, I appreciate the, 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 the question there. Uh, yeah, again, we're going to, we are going to follow the process, which in this case would, you know, for a, um, um, or any license amendment request would provide an opportunity to request a hearing, uh, an opportunity for a hearing. Um, so that 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 would be there, um, you know, and, and that's going to be provided um, in accordance with our normal process. Um, so I mean, I, it, it, I, well, I'm not sure what else I can. So yeah. what you're saying, Doug, is so that your, your you know, process, as I understand, your process could allow for approval of a restart before we get a more thorough hearing that would follow after the fact as Dan Hirsch so aptly put. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and in that case the the regulations provide that if they if the staff is able to make a no significant hazards consideration determination, uh, that the that that um, none of the, none of those criteria are, are met in this case, that um, the 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 A we could issue an amendment in that case, uh, even even if the a hearing had been requested. Uh, the hearing would still occur, yes, um, I and mean, it would still occur um, if it was granted by the ASLB. I mean, that would be um, up to them to, to make that determination as to whether it met all their contention and miscibility uh, criteria from, from that standpoint. Um, but it could occur. Um, you know, we, so, we would be able to issue it if if we are able to make that determination. You had a follow-up question for Edison? Well, yeah, yeah just, just to follow up on that a little further, um, you know, you guys are the ones that got it wrong the first time when they should have had a license amendment to avoid this problem to begin with. And if you expect the public to trust your judgment without getting everyone's input on this, then I think you're going to get a lot of resistance, and I hope it will change your mind. Uh, it's just... Astounding to me that you would even cooperate with Edison and avoid that adjudicated license amendment hearing. That's I just still don't understand it, but I'll go on with the question to Edison if you don't mind. Sure. Um, Edison continues to recite the mantra that safety is first. And we know from David Freeman's testimony and other people, experts in the field, that we really do not have a problem meeting our energy needs in the summer, regardless of what their friends in the Chamber of Commerce and business community say. We are going to be fine, and so what other reason besides profit for Edison is there to rush this decision? Can you please explain why you have to rush this, because not for the benefit of Californians? Gary, uh, again, uh, the folks that are with us today are, are technical people. I don't have system planning folks available to me. If, if you want to get a hold of us outside of this meeting, we can tell you what our forecasts are for the Southern California area. Um, but I, I don't have anybody here that can talk to that right now. All right. Thank you. Well, thanks for your time. And just please be exceptionally safe and err on the side of caution, please. Got it. Thank you very much, Gary. And operator, we'll take the final caller, please. Thank you and Myla Reese, and your line is open. I'm I'm here. Uh, thank you very much for taking my call. I'm calling from Los Angeles, which I also consider to be uh, part of the San Onofre nuclear danger zone. Should a a, a serious event happen. At San Onofre, I don't think that anyone in Southern California is safe. My question is, uh, in the two years following the events that triggered the ongoing nuclear catastrophe in Fukushima, has the NRC evaluated the, the ability of Unit 2 to withstand a beyond basis, beyond design basis event, such as a great tsunami or an earthquake of greater magnitude than 7.0? And, um, following on that, because I believe that you have not, and you talked about how you would only be um, evaluating a previously evaluated um, 
<clears throat> I'm sorry, that you would be making your determination about uh, the no significant hazard consideration based on previously evaluated criteria. Is it my understanding that, in fact, um, you did not make this previous evaluation of the beyond design basis events and you would be, not be taking them into consideration? Thank you. Okay. Uh, for the first part of your question. And I have a follow-up. Okay. okay. Well, wait. Let me do the first part. Um, with regard to the events of Fukushima, the agency reviewed um, uh, the status of our operating um, reactors at the you know, not long after the events of Fukushima occurred and determination was made that the plants were safe to continue to operate. Um, actions have occurred since then, though, to, re, um, to, to uh, request additional information with regard to uh, seismic, for, for one. There's flooding, seismic, and several other areas. And... Um, the plants have been, you know, grouped and prioritized, and we're in a process now where each um, operating plant is reevaluating their seismic hazards in light of um, new current information in the in the U.S. So that was the first part. I didn't know you did ask something else, but I didn't catch what the. So, so, so let me follow up on, on, on that. Is it so? Given that you're still in the process of reviewing whether or not. Uh, San Onofre can withstand a, an earthquake of greater magnitude than 7.0 and run safely, or can um, withstand a p potential great tsunami, it is in a tsunami zone. Is it, there is a possibility that, in fact, you will allow Edison to restart their damaged nuclear reactor prior to having that full evaluation in place? Okay, so, so, yeah. Yes. Yeah, the other part. You, you, so, there is a, you, you yeah. say, are you saying yes, there is a potential for you to grant yes, that I'm saying, prior to making that evaluation? I'm saying that the activity is ongoing at all the plants in the country with regard to Fukushima follow-up are, are not... Um, do you know nothing needs to be resolved at this point prior to the research decision on um, for for songs? So and yes. why is that? Um, that goes back to the initial thing I said, where following the events of Fukushima, the uh, reviews were conducted and. Um, the agency determined that all plants at that point, unless there's something specific about a particular plant, were, were safe to continue to operate. All right. And Doug, you're going to address the no significant hazards yeah, question. Yeah, I, I think you asked the question as well as to whether or not those actions are part of the no significant hazards consideration determination, um, and those are not. Um, you know, the, the what is... To, to what is part of that no significant hazards consideration determination is the, the the change to the to the license that is being requested. Um, that's what what we have to look at is is the change that, that that's being requested. Does that change um, increase the, the the probability? You know, significantly increase uh, result in a significant increase in the probability of those 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 criteria. Um, so, it, it, and again, it, we, that does not consider other other activities that are ongoing. Uh, it's not. It's not. It, can't, it doesn't go beyond the uh, the amendment request. Uh, it, it has to be focused only on the amend, on, on the changes in the in the amendment request. All right, and just to follow. Well, I'd, I'd like to remind you that that Chairman McFarland. Uh, stated that as a geologist, she has an acute appreciation of the challenge of predicting the Earth's behavior. And that since the Earth is constantly changing and our recorded knowledge represents roughly one millionth of the Earth's history, there is much we don't know. In light of this, we must be wise in balancing confidence in our engineering prowess with the humble recognition that natural systems have repeatedly demonstrated the ability to confound us. Those are the words of Chairman McFarlane. I have no confidence that you, you know, that you would restart a damaged nuclear reactor 
in a tsunami zone riddled with earthquake faults. I'm just appalled by that possibility. I think that the hubris that is demonstrated by your confidence in your, um, in your determination is just absolutely shocking. All right. Thank you very much, ma'am, for your comments and your questions. We certainly appreciate your opinion. And, uh, operator, that will conclude uh, our questions from folks on the phone today. Thank you.